<laughs> Peace and joy guys, welcome back to another video, Drum Hiller Farms. And hey, I wanna talk to you guys today about something that occurred to me about last year. We're about ready to move the cattle into this, what I'm gonna call long grass grazing. Mm -hmm. Stick around to the video, I wanna talk to you about it. Say what we're doing on Drum Hiller Farms to be grazing grass like that. We call her the trumpeteer. All right, so we're gonna get ready to set up our fencing. And I know you guys can't see it in this video, but way down there at the end of this field, I've got two posts stacked on top of one another, kicking posts, and I can just barely see it. That's my line. I've paced that off. I also got another one up here that I've marked, paced it off. And what we're gonna do, and what we've been doing every day, is cutting a trail and putting our fence inside that trail. It's a lot easier for us to walk through it, and it's also easier for the cattle to see so nobody runs through a fence. There's grass that is just, it's, it's over the top of the hood of the gator. There's one right there in front of us that's about as tall as the gator altogether. And what I'm doing is just nose in the front of my gator right to that post that I got sitting out there. A lot of people would tell me this is no good. This feed, it's gone to rank. <clears throat> you need to go out there and you need to mow those pastures. And I'm so over mowing or hearing people mow for seed heads. I'm not going to do it. I don't believe it. Uh, I had one guy tell me you have to reseed your pastures every so many years. That's that's another thing that <sighs> I just don't get. But you know what are we doing here? What is this? Look at the front of this gator right here. It's covered in grass seed. By the end of the year, we're gonna have grass growing out of our light bulbs. But look at underneath all of this grass. It's just about a solid sward. clover and look the clover has gone to seed it's planting more clover and that's ladino white clover but when you walk through here there's some red clover right there flowered out it's just it's everywhere guys it's not just that one little spot it's literally everywhere you look everywhere we pull this grass back and there's just a ton of clover take a look at that view just grass on grass on grass glory to god glory to god all right so right here is that marker that i was telling you about <laughs> look at all this clover right here buddy um I just kind of put two posts together here oh. and uh, that gets it tall enough out of the, the grass to where I can see it at the other end and so I just go and pace myself off how much I'm doing every day there now that's enough for me to see it at the other end picking the outside tire track so they got this tire track they're gonna run into before this one it, how much taller that grass is than our fence if we tried to go ahead and put this fence in without making a track <clears throat> i think we would have some problems honestly i think we would get some some cattle that would walk right through it not seeing it we even made a track for our halfway point here and it's actually only about a third 
of the field, all right? Uh, what will happen is tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna lift up this uh, spool. I'm gonna take this halfway point down and they will have eaten or stampeded all of this overnight and then they will have the rest of the two-thirds of the field tomorrow morning um, and throughout the day and so their afternoon paddock is smaller than their all-day paddock well, they don't eat as much during the afternoon move <clears throat> now you think that that would be something that would just you would just know but I just got to tell you guys, it took us a couple years to realize that our afternoon paddock needs to only be about half the size as the all-day paddock. Um, another thing that we're going back to, instead of setting up two cells every day, we're setting up one and just putting a divider fence in. Now, when we were doing more of a selective graze, it was really hard to get a good stampede and a good graze by doing it this way. That's why we went to a single, or yeah, a single strip, one for the afternoon, one for the morning. Well, now that we've gone to a non-selective style grazing, this works great because they just eat everything. They stampede everything. It's really easy to set up. It's really, it's, you know, half the time to set up, half the time to take down. And in my morning, when I come out here before work, literally this takes about five minutes. It doesn't matter if they all come. You know, when we had two separate cells, I had to make sure everybody got on the other side of the fence. Uh, when I come out here in the morning, I get them all up, let them do their thing, urinate, poop on this paddock, and I just take the fence down and I go about my business. Allison is calling them right now. She's up there at the front of the field and she is hollering at them. There's a bunch of calves already on this side of the fence and just see them kind of poking out through the grass. No, oh, they're coming to me. Let's get on the left side of them here and take a look at their rumen. You see, she's not lacking. She's not lacking. Everybody's rumen is full here. That is a triangle right here that's where the rumen is and if it's empty you'll see a little hit of a triangle like that right there you can just barely kind of see a triangle right back there she's hungry everybody else is pretty well full and honestly guys on this last move here of the day i want to see them a little hungry I want them to have cleaned up pretty much everything in this paddock and I want them to be hungry going into that next cell for the day. Uh, that means that we've done a good graze. That means that they've eaten everything on this paddock that they'll pretty much eat. Now one thing you're going to notice, this paddock is not down to the ground. There's a ton of material that they've stampeded into the ground here. but uh, manure but that is 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 it, it, it's eaten everything that they're gonna eat out of that and there's a ton of manure distribution um, we look here at these weeds you can even see that these weeds everything has been just clipped right off of them there's nothing left all there is is a stem and I believe that that's buttercup and honestly, they love that stuff. It's one of the first things they'll go in and hit. All right, guys, something that has come to me last year when we started this non-selective style of grazing, I told Allison, I said, you know, this is gonna happen to us every year. Everything's gonna seed out and things are gonna go go to seed so to speak 
Now these seeds are not past any you know point of maturity. There's still a lot turning that's going to be left to go on it. But you guys, we've got a lot of this in front of us. We have about 50 to 60 acres of this ahead of us. And I'm not going to lose sleep over it anymore. You know, I have mowed pastures in the past and all that did was set my grass back to where I didn't have anything. Okay. They're yelling at their babies over here. <laughs> you get out of your way. Guys, I've had some people comment, is your fence not hot because the calves go in and out freely? Well, they're able to slip right underneath that fence. And if it does shock them, it's really hardly shocking them at all because there's not much grounding to the calf. They don't weigh very much. So, you know, if you had a little kid come out here, they could probably almost touch that fence without getting shocked because the bigger you are, the more of a ground you have, the more it's gonna shock you. So back what I was saying here about this, this, the seed heads, how much seed heads we have ahead of us. You know, last year I told Alice and I said, <clears throat> I feel like after the spring flush and we have this tall, I'm going to call this long or tall grass grazing that we're doing right now. Okay. And, and, and what I mean by that is the spring flush hit, everything just grew up. We weren't able to keep up with it. We tried our hardest to move them quickly get them through as much property as possible and and you know what we lost we lost the battle and we're gonna lose it every single year every single year we're gonna lose this battle this is a fighting battle unless you get out there and and, and, and cut your pastures with a bush hog and I'm not gonna do it I've already explained my reasoning but you're gonna lose it but you get one shot every year to take advantage of this much forage you get one shot. And I feel like that's where the non-selective grazing comes into play. You just give them a little slice every single day. Little slice, little slice, little slice. Guys, we're gonna probably get somewhere in the neighborhood of an 80 to 90 day rotation right now. Okay? And I'm just gonna tell you, there isn't a whole lot Mother Nature can send our way in 80 or 90 days that this ground that I'm walking on isn't going to have recovered grass in it. Now, it's not going to be that tall. It's not going to be that long, tall grass grazing. And we're going to have to make their paddocks a little bit bigger and take a little less of it. But you get one shot every year to let take advantage of that much forage that's in your pastures. And, and I'll tell you, I had to do it yesterday, okay? And let me take you over to two days ago. Two days ago's paddock, I just dropped across the fence right here. There was so much forage over here that we missed out on. I mean, if I start pawing through this, you guys, you, you, <laughs> you can almost go through and cut hay off of it. I mean, it's just, we just, we stampeded more grass than what we ate. And I don't know if that's true, but we just stampeded a ton of, of grass. And, and we come out here every day for, for the two days we was in this field and they, they didn't even want to move. They were so full, they just, they just sat there. I mean, you had to go and push them to get them to the other side of the fence. And that's, <sighs> you know, I don't want to say that that's a bad thing because it's not a bad thing. But I want them to be hungry enough to move to that next paddock and get to work on the next one, you know? So what I did was I decreased this paddock five paces. And the difference, and I know you're not gonna pick it up on camera, but the difference in the amount of harvest efficiency that we got out of this field in just that, or this paddock, just out of that five less paces has made all the difference in the world. One, you've seen, they were hungry when we showed up. 
trumpet trumpeteer, the trumpet cow, she was just hollering at us. They were all hollering at us. They were wanting to move. And as they walked past us, we seen their room and it wasn't wasn't empty. They were they were still full, but they were hungry. They were getting on the verge of where they were like, hey, I need to eat some more. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And so these paddocks that we're doing right now were about 660 foot long, front to back. And right now I have them in a 15 pace length. So somewhere around 45 foot, you know, 40 to 45 foot wide by 660 roughly feet long. And we're dividing that into a third in the morning and two thirds at night. Guys, look at these tree swallows. Tree swallows and bluebirds. All those bluebird houses that we've put up have paying off. Because these guys are, um, they're loving us for providing them a home. And not only are we feeding our cattle, <laughs> we're feeding the wildlife, glory to God. You know, I thought about this all day making a video about this long grass grazing, tall grass grazing. I don't, I don't know what to call it. I don't know if I'm the one that came up with that term. Comment down below if this is something you guys have heard of or you're doing. I just know a light bulb went off with me last year and it was, we gotta take advantage of this. And, and, and I didn't take advantage of it till probably about halfway through this graze of last year. So this is my first full year of understanding that we get one shot here. This grass will probably never be this tall again till next year's spring flush. And some would argue that this isn't the best feed. And I might agree with them to some, some extent. But when you get down in there and you see all that leaf, you see all that clover, and you see what they do to it. Uh, I don't know if I would say it's not the best feed in the world. Is it what we turned around and got on the last video? No, it's not that. But it's really good feed. And you know what it's going to do? It's going to supply feed for these animals for probably somewhere around 80 to 90 days. Allison's got the water moved already. She's uh, taking care of business while I'm making a video. I've had a lot of people ask about our water setup recently. Um, I am going to do a full video series on that. I'm going to show you our well houses. I'm going to really go into some depth on our whole watering system. But basically, we move that 35 gallon tote and uh, Right now we got a frost free, it's in that next field. This is a 330 foot long hose. And by the time we get to the end of that, how far that'll reach, there's gonna be another frost free down there that we're gonna hit. And I'll show you guys all that in another video. All right, guys, so I wanna, I wanna address one thing that I know is probably gonna come up here when people see this kind of grass that we're grazing. Why don't you cut that for hay? Well, the same reasons why I'm not gonna get out here and bush hog it are the same reasons why I'm not gonna cut it for hay. One, I've sold all my hay equipment. Uh, it's right in my business plan. I'm going to buy between ten dollars and $15,000 worth of hay a year. That's what I'm going to do. I know how much hay I'm going to put in each one of these animals that we're finishing out every single year. It's just a business expense. And if you're not running your farm like a business, I, I don't know what the heck you're doing. Um, so I'm not going to cut this for hay. 
and then have nothing to feed my cattle in the middle of summer because it didn't rain after we cut hay all right i've seen that happen i've done it i'm not gonna do it ever again and um you know i know a lot of people's goal in this type of a business is to not feed any hay at all and you know we're stockpiling a whole farm this year you know we've got about 35 acres set aside which isn't going to be enough to go the whole winter but when we start hitting grass like this and slicing it off every single day it's gonna it's gonna get us well into the winter if we don't have to touch it but my question as i was thinking about this today like you know making this video and you know how everybody you know, its goal is to graze 365 days a year i mean i'm with you that's that <laughs> i would love i would love to hit grass 365 days a year will it ever happen in michigan i'm not sure maybe but why wouldn't you want to feed hay the reason why these fields look the way they do is because we fed hay on them for two years now we fed about three to 300 bales. Uh, well, actually, we fed about 350 to 380 bales out here on this farm for the last two years. This farm was very, very degraded because these were all hay fields. These were all hay fields. You could walk through these fields about four years ago, three years ago. You could walk through these fields and you could literally see the ground. You could see bare soil all over the place and so this next year we are not going to feed hay out here because we got to get it on the rest of our farms but again my question would be why wouldn't you want to feed some hay put that ten thousand dollars into your business plan put it into your budget to feed that land again if you don't have to feed any hay at all i mean i guess pocket that 10 grand right but you know because I sold all my hay equipment and we quit haying any of the farms that we have, we, 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 we feed about, like I said, ten dollars to $15,000 worth of hay a year. And as a result of that, we've brought about $30,000 more worth of cattle onto our farm every year. And you know what? That doesn't include any labor. The labor, time, stress, cost of breakdown i mean if you're doing hay you know you got breakdowns so for us it's a win-win we're not going to cut this for hay we're going to keep running the cattle through it and we're going to buy the hay that we need to feed our land well i hope that makes sense to you we're calling it long grass grazing also known as tall grass grazing uh, I hope that kind of makes sense to you what I was talking about you know you get one shot at this spring flush grass and uh, I appreciate you guys watching the video hey guys go ahead and if you have any comments any questions pop them down into the comment section I really appreciate all the new subscribers we've got a lot of new subscribers that are to the channel here and um, hit that like button guys i'd really appreciate it that helps our channel show up on other people's uh pages to get the word out man about what we're doing here um how much more profitable this style of grazing is and um how much more better it, how much better it is for the land how much better it is for the animals and all around it's a win-win so hit that like button and if you got any comments, maybe maybe you're doing the same thing. Maybe you got a better idea. I'd love to hear it. I appreciate you watching. God bless.